Hey, this is Amy with Flower Moxie and I have Abigail here and we're working on our new pastoral white collection and the bouquet that we're going to be doing today and the bridesmaid bouquet which Abigail will be building is hydrangeas, garden roses, some seeded eucalyptus and in the bridesmaid bouquet we're going to be using standard Eskimo roses. So we can go ahead and get started. Um, when I'm using hydrangeas I always look for, um, typically one side is flatter than the other, so when I'm building, I want to put the fattier, heavier sides to be going out and around. That way, I don't have it face this direction and where I have like a shelf. So you can keep the leaves on or take them off. I find the lower ones to be pretty big, so I tend to pull them off. We have some Romeo garden roses, and um, these ones, uh, you know, I'm glad that it's, it's a good example of they're not as big as what I'm normally used to working with, but that's pretty, and I just broke that, um, that's pretty normal to just get size variation. But I always start with a hydrangea, and then I just start threading in my greenery. And with the bridesmaid bouquets, you can use two to three hydrangeas. Hydrangeas from wholesale are going to be much larger than if you were to buy them online for a few dollars a piece. So ours always come in kind of grapefruit size. So I start just getting my shape together and then I thread in my garden roses. And so sometimes I'll spread apart the hydrangea and kind of fish one of the roses through it being stubborn. If you like rounded and symmetrical and you're using a lot of cream, hydrangeas are a great solution for that reason, just because they're going to be large and give you that fluffiness and fullness and the symmetry. And the seeded eucalyptus is a really good example of how it can change through the season. So we always like to take pictures in the studio so you get a really good idea of the size and the scale. But this is um, this seeded eucalyptus just came back on crop, so it's pretty tender. So the seeds are smaller and the leaves are a little bit smaller. So I don't even stress about that. Just as a florist, I'm used to variations in sizes, in colors. Um, So that's not anything to worry about. And when I'm putting in, I kind of get my, my structure down and then I start like finding the opportunities where I can pull in these garden roses. And I'm going to kind of polka dot them all the way through instead of doing large clusters. Because when you're going for symmetry, um, you're not going to cluster as much as when you see me build a wild bouquet. So this has, uh, how many hydrangeas? One, two, three, four. So this is a, a really good size, but I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. And I look for the hydrangeas that, um, you know, for my top one, I want it to be mounted on the top. I don't want it to have that flat side. So I'll sift through my product and see, you know, which one's going to work the best. Like this one has a little bit of an awkward side to it, so I'm gonna look something, look for something that has like a flatter top. So this one works pretty well. And one thing you have to get used to is just ripping off leaves and such. That's kind of, for me, it was the hardest thing to get used to. And I know when Abby, she started designing with me, it was, it's hard to tear things off, but um, that's why I have this sitting out because this is a great example of things that I've torn off but we don't throw it away because this is what you're gonna make your boutonnieres out of, your cake flowers, corsages, floral crowns. So I consider nothing trash until the very end just because there's a lot of little things that you can use for it. And maybe I'm a hoarder and maybe I don't like to waste things. So <laughs> um, like I said before, this collection or this design is really simple and you can add to it. It's really pretty on its own, but like if you wanted to add more blush to it or just a different type of flower, like this is some Peruvian lily. So if you can imagine if you want to just make it your own and add something different to it to get more texture in it, you can easily just throw that in your cart as you're checking out. If the seeded eucalyptus is too bland for you, you can easily pull in 
you know, Salal, you can pull an olive branch, Israeli ruscus, and that will give it a different look. So I just kind of wanted to show you that you can easily add to. Um, this is a beautiful ranunculus. And so we've taken this and then we've added, added things in. A lot of times on Pinterest and blogs, you tend to see bouquets with more variation. But I also like working with spray roses a lot too. And here's an example of silver dollar eucalyptus. So if you want it to be more eucalyptus and green heavy, this is a great way to do it. But for collection's sake, we're gonna keep it pretty simple. And you can decide like how much things are going to sprig out and how much you wanna pull it in. It's all based on how much you nestle these greens in or how much you like let them be wild. So even when you see pictures on the website, of particular greens or a flower and it looks too wild for you, you know that you can control it by how much you pull it in or how much you leave it out. So I pretty much have this rounded, but I do find that I have a pretty massive hole here. So I'll look for that hydrangea that has that great flat shape and this is one of them and I'm just gonna fit it right in there. So in this collection, I average six hydrangeas just because I want it to be really full for you, but you don't need to use all of them. You can always find a place if it starts getting too big. I know my petite brides don't want to be overwhelmed with their bouquets. I'm petite, so I understand. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, this is a good example where it's a little bit too short. This is why I like doing videos with somebody else. Um, and that's okay, it's not gonna quite hit the water line, so if I'm working this for a client, I'm gonna fill the water all the way up and then I will um, put the ribbon on last. So sometimes you'll find that like ranunculus, anemones, they'll come in really short stemmed, especially like that and greenery like Dusty Miller. It's just too short and it won't re reach the full handle and hit your water line, so. Um, just tie it off anyways, throw it in the vase, fill it up all the way, and then just tie your ribbon on right before the wedding. Ooh, I like yours. How many hydrangeas did you use? I just used two, because I felt like they were pretty big. Mm -hmm. And you don't want the bridesmaids competing with them. Mm. Right So true. And that filled out really nicely. Mm -hmm. And she put about five Eskimo roses in them. Um, so here's my opinion on garden rose. I love garden roses. These are very, very beautiful, the Romeos. But compared to the Eskimos, they're gorgeous. But I think that the Eskimos and the blooms that we sell are just as pretty. So if the Garden roses aren't working out for your budget. I still, it's not going to look boring or it's not going to look like cheap blooms. My goal is just to not be an open mouth breather. <laughs> and you can decide how much or how little greens that you want. And I tend to get the structure built and then I'm just threading them through individual place where I want them. And my focus is to always get my placement and then I will pull all the issues and all the asymmetry out of it at the very end. So you've seen me use zip ties a million times and I put the zip tie on it, even on the symmetrical ones, and I go stand in the mirror and I just kind of keep adjusting them until it's at the level. So don't even stress when you're building this if it's not looking the way that you want it to look as you're building because at the end is kind of when it comes together. And it's very forgiving, especially with those zip ties. So I feel like everything's dispersed pretty well. Um, you get 12 stems of, a, of garden roses in a bunch and I don't really honestly feel like I'm going to use all of them. So I'll just go ahead and stop there and I'm slapping a zip tie on it. I always love to use zip ties and then when I'm holding a bouquet, I can keep my placement, run the zip tie on the palm of my hand and um, 
I never have to like take my hand away and lose my placement. So then I crank my zip tie down, but I don't pull it down enough to where I can adjust it. And at this point, and I really can't do this unless I'm standing in front of a mirror, that's where I see like any faults, but I will walk through it or turn it around. I broke that one. Uh, I'll turn it around and start like adjusting and I'll push things down and push things up to get it to the symmetry that I wanted. There we go. Out did me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's perfect. Thanks. All right, well, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.